As we discussed in video four, understanding the brain, when the stress response is activated, you may notice a variety of changes in your state of alertness and physiological changes that help us to take action to protect ourselves from the immediate threat. Some of these changes are noticeable and some are hidden. Children and youth may experience additional challenges managing strong emotions and the stress response as the brain doesn't fully develop until we're in our mid-20s. While children's thinking becomes much more sophisticated after the age of 11, the brain remains under construction for the first few years of life and again during the teen years. The child's brain is like a sponge, soaking up everything that's going on around them. Brain development in early childhood is shaped and reshaped by experiences children have. The brain's ability to modify, change, and adapt, both in structure and function throughout life and in response to experiences is called neuroplasticity. With the guidance of caring adults, children can be taught age and stage appropriate skills and strategies for identifying and managing strong emotions. The stress ladder is one model that helps us understand how the brain responds to stress. Another helpful model is offered by Dr. Siegel. Let's take a closer look at his hand model of the brain. The hand model of the brain allows us to picture the brain structure and imagine what happens in the brain when managing strong emotions. To begin, take your open hand and put your thumb in the middle of your palm and fold your fingers over the top. This would be the completed hand model of the brain. The closed fist with the thumb tucked in underneath represents an integrated brain where the upstairs and downstairs brain are working together to regulate the brain and body's responses. Let's take a closer look at what parts of the brain are represented by Dr. Siegel's hand model. In this front view of the brain, the prefrontal cortex is represented by the fingers. Lifting up the fingers reveals the limbic area represented by the thumb resting across the palm of the hand. The limbic area connects upwards to the prefrontal cortex and downwards to the area where the brainstem is located. The brainstem is represented by the wrist. It connects the whole brain to the body through a number of regions, including the spinal cord. Now let's briefly review what these areas of the brain do. As you may recall from our previous video, the brainstem is part of the downstairs brain. It receives signals from the body to help regulate a number of functions, including our breathing and heart rate. The brainstem, together with the limbic system, including the amygdala, are responsible for the fight, flight, freeze response. These areas of the brain are involved when, without thinking, we slam on our car brakes to avoid a collision. Moving to the upstairs brain, the prefrontal cortex is our thinking brain. This area of the brain allows us to learn, to manage our emotions, problem solve, plan, and tune into each other. The prefrontal cortex also helps us evaluate situations detected by the amygdala and use age and stage appropriate cognitive and behavioral skills to control our emotional and behavioral responses before our feelings escalate to the point where we can't control them. Dr. Siegel refers to an activated stress response as flipping our lid. This is indicated by lifting your fingers to release your fist. When our lid is flipped, communication between the upstairs and downstairs brain may be limited or completely interrupted, leaving the upstairs brain unable to function effectively. Depending on the intensity of the stress response and one's age and stage of development, it may be extremely challenging and sometimes impossible to engage in learning, communicate effectively, access reasoning and problem solving skills, and control behavioral responses while our lid is flipped. Any stressful situation, perceived or real, can cause us to flip our lid and shut down our thinking brain. Given that the upstairs brain is not fully developed until our mid-20s, children are more likely to experience numerous and significant challenges regulating their emotions. Teaching children about how the brain works using the hand model of the brain will help them recognize when they're about to flip their lid, 
giving them an opportunity to access support and or to use age and stage appropriate strategies for managing their responses and their behaviors. Both the stress ladder and Dr. Siegel's hand model are helpful tools for understanding what might be behind concerning or undesirable behaviors we sometimes see in our children and teens. In addition, adults can also use these tools as a way of checking in with themselves. What might the stress response or a flipped lid look like, sound like, and feel like for you? Stress responses vary from person to person and from situation to situation. When the fight flight freeze response is activated or when the brain and body are managing strong emotions, we are no longer regulated. We are in fact dysregulated. Recognizing and naming the signs of dysregulation in both children and ourselves helps us be intentional in the strategies we use to calm ourselves and connect with the child in ways that might be more effective in restoring their sense of calm and safety. Take a moment or two to pause and review the signs and symptoms of dysregulation listed on this slide. Some signs are noticeable behaviors, other signs are hidden, like having tunnel vision or a headache. In the case of children and youth, we can view some of these signs as messages they send us to let us know their lid is flipped. They are dysregulated and the downstairs brain is focused on managing a perceived or real threat to their emotional or physical safety. Access to the calm, thinking, planning, upstairs brain has been partially or fully blocked. Think about how your kids let you know they're dealing with strong emotions or the stress response. What does it look like and sound like when their lid is flipped? This list of signs and symptoms is also applicable to adults. Take a few minutes to reflect on a time your lid was flipped. What did it sound like? What did it feel like? What did it look like? Reflect on how you respond when your kids are upset. Do you generally respond from the upstairs brain with logic explaining the reasons behind why your child might feel like they do? Do you typically match emotion with emotion or is it some combination? Perhaps most parents would say that how they respond to their child's flipped lid will depend on the circumstances and where they themselves are on the stress ladder in that particular moment. Being aware of what triggers a child's stress response will not only help us be intentional in the approach we take to intervene and support, it also helps us more accurately identify the age and stage appropriate skills and capacities we need to help children develop so they can learn how to regulate their emotions. As their regulation skills strengthen, they will be better able to manage their emotional responses, allowing them to return to the top of the ladder where they can re-engage in their learning. Reflect on the kinds of experiences, environments, or interactions that may trigger your child's stress response. The stress response can be activated by one trigger or a variety. The intensity of the response will vary and will be influenced by a variety of factors, including stage of development, your child's unique and special needs, how those around your child respond, and what supports are available to them at the time. Example of triggers at school and possible triggers at home might include but are not limited to the ones listed on this slide.